This is the greatest boon we have, this is what sets us up as human beings. But this is what most human beings suffer, because they are not able to handle their own cerebral capabilities. If they had half the brain that they have, they would be quite peaceful. Today, the world is facing the pandemic and a lot of us are living in fear, are living in anxiety, living in pain. What are some of the things that you could suggest, you know, very simple things that people could do every day to, to basically get the balance of mind and peace of mind? Well, it's an unfortunate reality that uh, there is a pandemic, all right? Over a million people have lost their lives and many, many people have lost those who were dear to them. And how they lost them is also very significant. When they lost their parents, some of them even their spouse or their children, they couldn't be there. They could not even attend the funerals. Forget about tending to them, they could not even attend to the funerals. This could leave a huge uh, scar in their minds for a lifetime, because that's not easy to handle. People die, that's a different matter, all of us die. But at least you are there taking care, doing something that you believe, you know, if not for them, at least you believe, you know, because of your attendance, you feel some relief in that whole process. That relief is missing, so definitely a certain level of uh, stress and anxiety building up. And as you know, there is economic losses and there are structural changes in our life. See, uh, <laughs> in the last forty years, thirty-nine to forty years, I had never slept at home for more than eight to ten days. Now I'm sleeping on the same pillow for four months, five months, which I've never done. It's a welcome change for me, but it's a huge structural change. That means all the programs, all the events, all the schedules, everything called off. Well, at the same time, technology already had solutions, but we were refusing to use it. Pandemic is forcing us to use the technology. See, you and me are doing fine right now. You're in ba Bengaluru, I'm in Tennessee, but we're doing fine. Well, it would be a different thing to meet personally, but this is good. What is the point of technology developing it and not using it? Having said that, well, the concerns of health are there. One thing is your fundamental concern of your own health and well-being and life. Okay. Another thing is the concern of your family and friends and, you know, people that matter to you. And the concern of loss of uh, incomes, loss of business, closure of businesses, lo loss of employment, and structural changes in the society. You're not able to meet people, you're not able to attend to things that you had taken for granted, you know. Simply, you want something, you just walked out on the street and bought what you want or met who you want, that's gone. So, these structural changes are actually impacting people much more than various other things. So, one important thing is personal concern about uh, our own health, which is also an important aspect because only if we are alive, all the other concerns are relevant to us. One thing is to enhance the immunity. Immune system can be greatly activated by doing certain simple processes. Right now, millions of people, particularly uh, medical professionals, are doing these practices which we thought online. It's called Simha Kriya, which brings your immune system up very quickly. This is one thing we must do, because staying alive is a fundamental responsibility right now. And keeping people around us also alive is also equally important responsibility. The next thing is a mental situation. Staying physically alive is paramount. Next thing is your mental situation, because staying alive should not become a torturous process. Mm -hmm. Right now, it is becoming like that, and the number of suicides are increasing. WHO is talking about suicide pandemic may unfold. So that is really... Uh, if the virus didn't get you, you're doing it to yourself, that is a terrible thing to happen in the world. But unfortunately, 
humanity is moving in that way. What is it that human beings suffer, if you look at this? One thing is, if physically we get sick, physical suffering will happen. But that is a small percentage. The real suffering is mental suffering. Mental suffering essentially means, you suffer your own intelligence. If you had the brain of an earthworm, because you brought the earthworm in, if you had the brain of an earthworm, you would be quite peaceful. Now there is a cerebral possibility in you, which is not comparable to any other creature on this planet, another level of cerebral activity. This is the greatest boon we have, this is what sets us up as human beings, but this is what most human beings suffer, because they are not able to handle their own cerebral capabilities. If they had half the brain that they have, they would be quite peaceful. With a full brain, they are struggling. But you tell me, because you are in the uh, processor, which is in a way trying to manufacture intelligence, all right, in some way. Intelligence essentially means right now for people, this is not uh, my definition, but in people's experience, a certain amount of memory and an imaginative way of using that memory is considered intelligence by most people, which is what the artificial intelligence is also going in that direction. Your entire computing system is going in that direction. There is a data, imaginative use of that data is intelligence. That's what people understand as intelligence. No, that is just intellectual process. There are other dimensions of intelligence which does not depend upon data. That's a different matter. We will look at that if there is time. So for this, the simplest thing is, you have only two kinds of suffering, physical suffering, mental suffering. There is no other form of suffering. There is a simple process. Once again, millions and millions of people across the world are doing this. This is called as Isha Kriya. A simple process with which you bring a little bit of space between you and your body, little bit of space between you and your mind. What does little bit of space mean? See, right now, uh, this clothing, this is loose, so always I'm conscious that this is my clothing. Suppose I was wearing skin-tight nylon clothing, after some time I wouldn't know which is my skin, which is my clothing. It is so. If it's something doesn't leave any space, you think you are that after some time. So, right now what you call as my body is an accumulation which you gathered over a period of time. What you call as my mind is also accumulation of impressions that you gathered over a period of time. If you create a little bit of space between you and your body, between you and your mind, this is the end of suffering. Only when there is no fear of suffering, will a human being walk full stride. Whether pandemic or no pandemic, this is something that everybody must do, that you have no fear of suffering because your life is a limited amount of time. Only miserable people think it's very long. If you're joyful and well, even if you live for hundred years, it's too little. One who is... see, on a particular day, if you're very happy, you notice twenty-four hours pass off like a moment. If you're miserable, twenty-four hours feels like a eon, all right? So, time is a very relative experience. If you keep yourself well, Hundred years is just nothing, it'll just get over like a few days in your life. So, this is very important that one is free from the fear of suffering, because only then you can walk full stride, otherwise entire life will be half steps. Human genius, human competence, human capability has been severely crippled because the fear of suffering. And unfortunately, the religious forces, moralistic forces, ethical forces have always been trying to create, manage humanity with fear. You don't do this, you will go to hell. You don't do this, we will punish you. You don't do this, we will beat you. This... this has caused fear. Right from childhood, even a kindergarten child, people are managing, even an infant, they're showing stick and saying, if you don't do this, you will get this, all right? So, when fear has been the basic way of managing humanity, you have crippled the humanity. Human genius will not flow. Only now I would say, not even one percent of human beings get to unfold their capabilities and genius to some extent. Ninety-nine percent is fear-based.